Hi, welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to discover how urine samples can be used for diagnostic testing. This includes pregnancy testing, as well as testing for anabolic steroids and drugs. OK, now urine contains a number of different substances. This includes the waste product urea, as well as ions such as the sodium ion and the potassium ion. We can use the presence of chemicals in urine to diagnose medical conditions. For example, glucose is normally never found in urine. So if glucose is found in urine, then this can indicate that a person has type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Now one important use of urine testing is to determine pregnancy. I'm showing you here a human embryo. Around six days after fertilization, a human embryo implants into the wall of the uterus. At this point, the placenta begins to form. Cells which form the placenta produce a hormone called human chorionic gonadotrophin, or HCG. And some of this HCG will be released into urine. So the presence of HCG in the urine can show that a woman is pregnant. I'm showing you here a modern pregnancy test. These use monoclonal antibodies to test for the presence of HCG in urine. So let's look at how monoclonal antibodies to HCG are produced. In the first stage, a mouse is injected with HCG. In the next stage, the B lymphocytes are extracted from the spleen of the mouse. Some of these B lymphocytes will produce antibodies against HCG. Now, B lymphocytes have a relatively short lifespan, so the B lymphocytes are then fused or joined with a cancer cell called a myeloma, and this produces hybridoma cells. Hybridoma cells divide rapidly and have a very long lifespan. Now, only some of these hybridoma cells will be producing antibodies against HCG. So next, the hybridoma cells are screened. This identifies which cells are producing antibodies against HCG. When the correct hybridoma cell is found, it's cultured. This produces millions of copies or clones of the original hybridoma. Finally, the antibodies to HCG are purified. Now these antibodies were all produced from a single clone of hybridoma cells. So these are called monoclonal antibodies. And all of these antibodies are specific to HCG. OK, so let's take a look at how a pregnancy test works. A pregnancy test contains a strip of absorbent material called a wick. The subject places the end of the wick into the first urine that she passes in the morning. If she's pregnant, then this morning urine will contain the highest concentration of HCG. I'm showing the HCG as hexagons. The wick contains monoclonal antibodies to HCG. Each antibody is attached to a tiny coloured bead. I'm showing these beads in pink. Now these antibodies are mobile. In other words, they can move up the wick. The antibodies now bind to the HCG, forming an HCG antibody complex. Notice that we also have unbound antibodies. Now the urine and the antibodies make their way up the wick. At a certain point, the wick contains a line of immobilized antibodies which cannot move. These immobilized antibodies bind to the HCG antibody complexes. So now the colored beads form a visible pink strip across the wick. And this shows that the woman is pregnant. OK, now there is a problem here. If no pink strip forms, then this would suggest that the woman's not pregnant. But what if the test was defective and did not contain any antibody? A defective test would never produce a pink strip, even if the woman was pregnant. So a defective test would always produce a false negative result. However, the test contains an inbuilt system to prevent this. Remember that some of the antibodies did not bind to HCG. These unbound antibodies continue to move up the strip. Further up the strip, we have another line of immobilized antibodies. These now bind to the unbound antibodies. So now we have a second pink strip. This pink strip tells us that the test is working. If the woman is not pregnant, then only this pink strip will form. OK, now we can also analyze urine to test for the presence of anabolic steroids. Anabolic steroids are based on the male hormone testosterone, and they're used by some athletes to produce muscle growth. Now, anabolic steroids can be detected in urine. To do this, a technique called gas chromatography mass spectrometry is used. 
In this technique, the urine sample is turned into a vapour and passed along a tube. Different substances move along the tube at different rates. This produces a chromatogram, like the one I'm showing you here. And this can be used to show the presence of anabolic steroids in the urine sample. We can also test a urine sample for the presence of drugs and alcohol. Many drugs are detectable in urine. And in some cases, the breakdown products of drugs are detectable. And this can be several days after the drugs were taken. When testing for illegal drugs, the urine sample is first tested using monoclonal antibodies. This is called an immunoassay or ELISA test. And we looked at ELISA tests in the topic on the immune system. If the ELISA test is positive, then the test is confirmed using gas chromatography mass spectrometry. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe diagnostic testing of urine.